Hey guys, it is hailing outside and my poor Fuji is left out there to take the brunt of it. But the light is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I found this cool little spot that I'm shooting. So let's get started. different photography tutorial. Most of my tutorials are like step one, step two, step three, but today I just kind of want to live with you for the next 24 hours. The, the story is I got a call yesterday from a very deep pocketed client who owns a tract of land up here that they're gonna build 1800 homes and they want beautiful landscape photography of the area for their advertising. And so I want to walk you through in this video me shooting the, the area, what I'm doing to prepare for that presentation, figuring out my pricing, and also putting together a portfolio, and then hopefully at the end of this video, I'm gonna have a new client, so wish me luck. But the story starts a little bit before that. I've been getting incredible calls for landscape photography clients. I outfitted a hospital with photos a few months ago um, that wanted landscape photos of Idaho and Oregon. I got a call from a lawyer who wanted me to uh, photograph a remote area of Idaho for a lawsuit, and now this one. And the reason is because my my photography portfolio is ranking really, really well on, on Google because I have a bunch of links to it from improvephotography.com. So it's a cool opportunity. I'll take what I can get because landscape photography usually doesn't pay very well. And so I'm just gonna walk you through my process and hopefully we'll have some luck. It was a pretty good night last night. I wish I could have taken you out to some of the actual photography part of it, but it sounded like this for most of it. So I'm back in the house and it's time to look at my photos, but very bad news. That right there uh, means one of my hard drives has failed on my Drobo, and so we have got to fix it. The cool thing about the Drobo is when a hard drive goes bad, one, I have a backup. So this is actually my backup Drobo. I was just syncing all my data and my primary Drobo's under there. And so um, this is my backup and then each Drobo has two copies of the data everywhere. So all we have to do is remove the offending hard drive and slip in another one that I had in the garage. Shazam! Now it's gonna take several hours to fix itself and it's gonna take the data that was duplicated and put it onto that third one and then backup Drobo is gonna be good to go. I already have my primary just fine and so it's rolling. It's three hours until the client meeting, so I sat down at my iMac to edit together some video that we got last night. It turned out pretty good. It's nothing amazing, but it was all right. I'll let you watch it now. I edited the video in Final Cut. I just switched from Premiere Pro, so I still feel like I'm kind of struggling through to understand everything, but so far I love Final Cut. It's 10 times faster than Premiere Pro is. You can scrub through video just fast. It exports like lightning. It's really nice. And then the other thing I like is the way titles work in Final Cut. You can just download Apple Motion titles and put them in, you can you know, buy them, uh, they're easy to find online. And then you just change the text and boom, you're ready to go. I've never been good at doing it, like in After Effects to use in, in Premiere Pro, and so this is really big for me. So that's the video that I've cut together. Oh, one more thing. <coughs> 
I do the audio using audio blocks. I have an affiliate link set up. If you go to improvephotography.com slash audio blocks, it will take you to audio blocks. It's really inexpensive. It's $99 for a whole year and you can download as much music and use it pretty much in any project you can imagine, commercial or personal, which is a really good deal. So I love that, uh, something I can definitely recommend. So we've got our video together and now I want to focus there on the Canon PIXMA Pro 100. This is the printer I use here in my office. I have a review at it of it if you go to improvephotography.com slash PIXMA review. I have that review on, to a, on a YouTube video or just search on YouTube for PIXMA Pro 100 improved photography and you'll find it. It's a really cool printer. I've been having driver issues, but overall I really love the, the printer. The print quality is just stunning from it. So I decided instead of showing my photos on my little Mac, Mac Air or on an iPad, I wanted to show them big immersive prints. And so I'm printing as big as I can on the printer and I want to walk in with a you know, big chunk of print so they can hand it, you know, touch it, feel it, hold it, and hopefully that's going to be a little bit more immersive. Mostly I'm going to just show my general landscape portfolio, but also one or two stills that I got last night and hopefully it's all going to work out. So I'm going to export the video now and then it's time to look through my portfolio and pick which ones we're going to put in. All right, next step, I'm at Michael's and I'm trying to decide which of these art covers to bring. I didn't want to be like a dork walking in with a bunch of loose prints and flopping all over myself. And so I'm gonna pick one of these. This one is $11. And this one is $50. I'll save the money for some photo gear. <laughs> 11 bucks, we're set. I got all my prints in here. So I'm a professional going to the meeting and um, only an hour left, so here we go. All right, it's time for me to get out of here to go to the meeting, but here's what I decided on pricing. Basically, I'm gonna offer a flat rate for $8,500 where I'll go to the property 15 times and do both drone and still photography. And I'm gonna deliver no, no fewer than 30 photos, uh, but I'm really just gonna give them whatever they have and a release to do whatever they decide to do with the photos. I don't care if they print it on a billboard, unlimited release. Or to do it a la carte at $900 per image and $2,500 per video. Um, it's, I think the pricing is probably what they're going to expect, maybe a little higher, um, but I, I think it's pretty fair both ways here. I mean, I'm gonna be doing a lot of work getting out there and shooting, and I want to make sure it's enough money that I'm getting that I'm going to do a good job to earn it for them. If you try to go to cheat too cheap, then uh, you're de-incentivized to work and you don't feel very good about the project. So I feel like this is enough to, uh, to make me really work for this and do a good job for them. I got here just a couple minutes early, so I have time to YouTube one more time. I want to just talk about my game plan and kind of what I'm going to do when I get in there and we'll see how it actually goes. But my thought is, well, first of all, I just did a job interview for uh, one of my other businesses. I was interviewing college students to do an internship, and we ended up just not hiring anybody for the position because they all came in and I, I said, you know, what do you know about my company? Um, and they would say, oh, well, uh, I know that you like blog about things and <laughs> they just had no idea and like I live my life online uh, whether through improved photography or my income school blog or camper report or whatever at knifeup.com I, ha I have a series of blogs that I do and uh, like I live my life online if you want to know about my company it's all there so it just was a clear signal that they just did not care about my company. This was just an application that they happened to send in. And that was just, man, it just really discouraged me from wanting to do business with them. 
I really don't like it when I'm the most passionate person in the building. When you are, when you've hired somebody to do a job and they just are treating it like a job instead of really trying to accomplish the mission that I'm trying to do with the company. And so I want to show passion for his company. I uh, show that I've been out there, I did my research, I found out all about the development and the legal battle it was to get it. Um, I talked to the secretary, I spent the time to call with her yesterday, see if I can find out what he likes and doesn't like. He said, she said he likes snowy mountains and so I got a bunch of snowy mountain photos in my portfolio, that kind of thing. So I hope I can get that across, show my portfolio, tell them some of my credentials that I've had photos published in magazines and books and all that kind of stuff uh, to show that I can deal with them professionally and then we'll talk about pricing. So I'm about to go in. Wish me luck everybody. Bye. And we're back. The meeting went pretty well. They seemed to be really happy with the work, uh, both my portfolio, and they did seem really impressed that I went out to see the property. I understood the project and knew a little bit about, about the company itself. So that was all really good. When it came down to the packages, I made a couple mistakes. So let me walk you through what I had done and what I wish I had done. <laughs> So I made an $8,500 package that basically I'm gonna go out there at least 15 times, I'm gonna shoot, they're gonna get all the photos from the shoots, at least 30 of them are gonna be publishable quality, uh, you know, the winner shots. But because it's raw property right now, they didn't wanna go on a media blitz, and I included a video in that package and more times out there than I probably needed to. And so they wanted me to reduce the price and reduce the amount of work. Uh, they wanted it to be in the four or five thousand dollar range, and I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna stick with. I'm gonna drop it down to six thousand dollars and reduce the work to just ten shoots out there, and then get them getting all the photos from the shoot and no video. And the reason that I'm doing that is I want to do a good job for them. It's not a matter of being greedy. Landscape photography is dependent on the weather. And you can't just look outside at the clouds and say, oh, it's going to be an epic sunset. You don't know if a cloud drops in front of the sun, etc. And so I want to make sure I'm going out there enough times and consequently I'm being paid for that, that I can be absolutely certain that I can deliver them a good quality photo. They're interviewing other photographers, some great photographers like my buddy Chad Case I saw was in the lobby after I left. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm not gonna cave too much on the price. I'm gonna be pretty firm, uh, give them a discount with less work, but I wanna make sure I'm gonna get paid enough to get out there and really do a good job for them. New development, client called again and said even the revised package is just still really high and so it looks like they're gonna go with somebody else. They, she said that she really liked the work, she loved that I took the initiative to get out to the property and so she said she really just didn't want price to be the determining factor so she asked if there was anything else I could do and I said no. Uh, I, I really feel like that's a fair price if I'm going to be getting out there you know at least 10 times and shooting and I want to guarantee I'm going to get them something. I feel like I had a fair price and so you know if they decide to go with somebody else that's okay. Negotiating to me isn't really I hate you give me your money and you know I'll agreed kind of thing. It's just about matching what one company can offer and what another person is willing to give. And um, that's that's uh, what I, you know, to give that service, I feel like that's what my time would be worth. And so I hope I'm able to work with them. It seemed like an amazing company and stuff. But if they end up going with another photographer like Chad Case, man, they'd be in good hands. He's a great photographer too. So we'll see.